Hello and welcome to the Fire Chief's video message for March 2022. Um, back at Station 32 today and we'll be talking to my guest Jack Nichols from the uh, Heroes Incorporate in, in, a, in a moment. Jack, welcome and thank you for joining me. Great to be here, Chief. Absolutely. One of the things I wanted to, to start off and we just less than a week ago had the Friendly Gardens apartment, Littonsville Road explosion and the uh, incredible event there, the amazing fact that we've had no loss of resident life, um, you know, 14 people transported. That was a, a extraordinarily complicated event, a lot of work in extremely hazardous conditions and um, great work done by all of the men and women of MCFRS, all of the folks from the federal partners and mutual aid agencies and all the other county government agencies that have come together as we do and they do to work uh, collaboratively on an event of such complexity. So my hat goes off to all of the men and women of MCFRS to the great work and to the organization of the nonprofits and county organizations as we have helped these over 200 residents uh, that have been impacted for short term, long term, and maybe some very long term on this event. So great work being done as you all do every day. Um, thank you very much. You're uh, here with me today, Jack, and uh, you're from Heroes Incorporate, Incorporated. Now we shortened it out to Heroes, but yep. you know, a lot of people, I'll be honest, even myself, before I sat into this into this seat and 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 became uh, a part of your board mm -hmm. and a part of the Heroes process, didn't really understand Heroes well, um, and my hat goes off to. Uh, Mr. Doggett, and how this organization started. Can you mm -hmm. tell us what Heroes is and how Heroes started? Sure. Um, well, first of all, what Heroes is is actually an acronym. So it stands for Honor Every Responsible Officer's Eternal Sacrifice. Right. And so what we do is we provide financial support and resources to the families of firefighters and law enforcement officers who die in the line of duty. And so 1964, a guy by the name of Bud Doggett, who was a uh, DC businessman at the time, uh, back in 64, this was before uh, PSOB benefits and other Public types safety officer benefits. Exactly, other types of insurance that are now available that was not available at the time. And uh, they started in the district uh, with uh, the police department there. And uh, the story goes is Mr. Doggett sitting in the back of the church. Uh, this is before all the insurance, and they started passing the hat for the widow. Uh, and he and a few of his uh, business associates said that's just not right. And so they started Heroes uh, with the sole goal of taking care of these widows and children and making sure that they get whatever resources that they need. Um, so today, uh, we are now working on our 215th line of duty death. Uh, and also that 215th is also the eighth that we are working on on behalf of Montgomery County, which is Kenny Lacaro from uh, Wheaton. And um, his affiliation with Wheaton allowed us to cover um, that line of duty death uh, as well. So our history with, uh, with Montgomery County goes back many, many, many years. And uh, it's an honor and a privilege to do uh, what we do. Absolutely. And Heroes is I'm going to use the phrase DC centric. You're based in DC. You support mm -hmm. public safety, fire rescue, and law right. enforcement agencies, state, local, and and our federal partners in this geographic area, right? That's correct. And so we we call it Greater Washington, but with the commutes and everything now, we define that really. We go as far as Howard County north, so in Maryland, Howard, Prince George's, and Montgomery County, and then all the way south to Quantico. So. Uh, Loudon, Prince William, Arlington, Alexandria, all of those, and then of course the District of Columbia. And you're right, when you add in all the federal officers, um, it's in tens of thousands of first responders that we provide this service for. Absolutely. And, and the extent of which Heroes helps is, is, as with the public safety family, the family always comes together and Heroes is an arm of that family and is able to and steps in at the worst of times and provides um, a sense of relief as well as a sense of guidance and direction. Mm -hmm. um, the directional support, the meeting with the, 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 the widow or the, the remaining family members, mm -hmm. and just outlining ways by which this organization, this great organization can help. Mm -hmm. um, 
sets a sense of relief, sets a, lifts a huge brick or weight off mm -hmm. of these people's shoulders. Yep. And, and it comes from, sadly, a lot of experience. Yeah. And um, the passion provided by the men and women of, of, of heroes themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things, and, and we are extraordinarily happy to talk about it today, and I've, I've communicated this recently with the other partners here inside of Montgomery County, one of the things heroes frequently sees as a struggle is documentation, wills, beneficiary mm -hmm. information. Talk about that for a second. We've, I think, in the last, say, 10 or 15 years, uh, eight or nine out of every 10 line of duty death cases that we work on, uh, the, the officer or the firefighter did not have a simple will. And so when that happens, that creates an enormous amount of conflict uh, within the family. And I've had uh, officers or firefighters tell me, well, I, I don't need a will because I'm not married. Or I'm married and I don't have any children, so my wife will get uh, everything anyway. What, but what they don't realize is what happens if something happens to them. So the first thing is, is someone has to be designated to handle that firefighter's affairs. Who's going to deal with the car or the credit card or the mortgage or all of that? If, if the officer or the firefighter doesn't designate that, then the court has to designate that, which perhaps is not the most efficient way to do it. That also leads to some conflicts within the family. Um, and so a simple will, which now can be done online for very cheap, um, prevents all that from occurring. It also speeds the whole process of mm -hmm. handling the firefighter's estate through the court system. As you can imagine with the pandemic that we had and all of that, the court systems are way backed up. Uh, it's very, very difficult to get that process you know, completed through, called the probate process, right. through. And so that's why uh, these firefighters and these law enforcement officers need a basic will so that it's for the people that are left behind so they can properly manage the affairs of the officer. Absolutely. And one of the things that, about the will is that's post-death. Right. And one of the activities that most of our organizations provide is, is, is in our benefit package is these insurance and, and the support network through our county HR, right. we frequently also see, you frequently also see beneficiary information not updated as yeah. often as the lack of a simple will. That is a heartbreaking uh, uh, thing to see. And what happens is, is it's, uh, it's, it's obvious you have a firefighter that goes through the academy, they get that paperwork, uh, they fill out a beneficiary, which when they're in their 20s perhaps may be uh, a brother or a sister or a parent right. and uh, unfortunately depending on the jurisdiction they aren't often reminded where to go to go back and update that so fast forward 10 years now they're married maybe they have children uh, or they're divorced or some other life event and if they didn't update that beneficiary designation if right. something were to happen within in the line of duty uh, whatever name is on that piece of paper is what happens and unfortunately I have been in the room when dad said to the daughter-in-law, uh, if he wanted you to have the insurance proceeds, he'd have put your name on the right. beneficiary form. And we don't want to see that happen to anybody. Right. So as, as a point of, of reference, you're exactly right. The, the mid-20s, early, early in their career person lists somebody, forgets about that designation. Yeah. Um, so a, a point that we always strive and you work always to outline is update that. Right. Be sure that that's accurate within your private life insurance as well as your, your work-related life insurance and benefit yeah. capabilities. But look, back on the, the simple wills, mm -hmm. the, the capability of heroes, you have um, strived to and set up a means in place by which we're going to be able to offer through the, the IAFF and the MCVFRA uh, Coupons. Give me a little bit about that. Yeah, we're really excited about this. We're uh, uh, Montgomery County is kind of our beta test case. As we said, we have so many of these officers and firefighters die in the line of duty. At Heroes, uh, we went and said, okay, well, what can we do to help that? Uh, and what can we do to get these firefighters a will without it costing them money or without it costing the county money? So we've partnered with an organization called LegalZoom.com, right. and they're going to essentially give us free coupon codes that we're in turn going to give to Montgomery County Fire and Rescue, and that will allow the firefighter to go and get a basic will online that takes about five minutes to complete. Right. Um, if you have uh, your signature 
signature notarized, it's then valid. So there's no lawyer involved. It's very quick. It's very cheap, and it, it's free. Right. So we think that'll help, and we we hope to be able to raise more and more money and provide more and more of that for not only Montgomery County but all the other jurisdictions a that we deal absolutely. with. Absolutely, and your your interactions with us as a as a test case is with county police and the fire rescue. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said, this is a partnership between President Buttle, President Sutton, and myself. And that information will be coming out soon through those uh, two conduits yeah. as to the offering of these coupons or, or these benefits. And it is immensely appreciated from my seat and the ability for our folks who realize, oh, I don't have this. Let, let me see if I can get one of those, uh, you know, accounts or one of those coupons. Yeah. Because it will make a difference. Mm -hmm. And as, seen, as having been the, 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 the son of or, or the dip, uh, the named in a will, mm -hmm. it is indeed, you know, a complicated process at a very toiled time in your life. Yeah. Um, and, and there's a lot that can be avoided with simple uh, information. So how can we, men and women of the fire service, help heroes? Well, how I think, can we be involved yeah, with heroes? I, I think, you know, one of the biggest things is, is um, your firefighters have a day job. If they can just make sure that their financial affairs are in order for their families um, or for themselves if they're a single individual. That's the biggest thing they can do for us right now. Get a will, make sure your insurance beneficiary designations are updated. And, and those are the big things that we see all the time. Um, we're not looking for publicity at Heroes. We've been doing this for a long, long period of time. In fact, we feel that it's our obligation as a community. Uh, we view it as the community's responsibility to help out and do all this. So, so that's what your firefighters can do is make sure that those things are updated at all times and make sure the people that love them know where that information is and can access it, it God forbid, if something were to happen. The, the numbers of, of kids in college, the number of folks going through uh, uh, supported by heroes yeah. is immense and it's, 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 it's an incredible testament to the organization. And we really, we do, Heroes really has two components when we actually do um, cover a, a firefighter or law enforcement officer. The first one is, is uh, the family's biggest concern, usually right out of the, short, right after the tragedy term. is, how am I going to pay the mortgage? How am I going to pay the car payment? So what our mission is, is to remove that financial obligation right off the bat. So Provide we're going to pay off right a lot there. of there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Pay then, off a lot of those debts. And then a, a, a college you know, tuition, college education for that, you know, right. dependent of our loved one, our, our, our co-worker. Right. Every child of that firefighter is going to get a full college scholarship to any college in the country right. that they can get into, and Heroes pays the full um, full cost of that tuition. Um, one of the only uh, organizations in the country that, that goes to that extent um, as far as the benefits that go to the firefighters. And, and, and we ask, we work in getting you and, and folks from your from Heroes to come to our recruits classes, to come to the first entry point as our, our firefighters or police officers are green and young. Yeah. Get them a little bit of information about these long-term planning points to, to set that in. So again, it is amazing what Heroes does, uh, has been doing now for decades and, and you know, back in the mid 60s as, as it yeah. started out from one tragic line of duty event and the experience of a very dedicated yeah. member in, in the community. And, and Mrs. Doggett is still there at there's, your side. There's still a lot, of the, a lot of the same people. Mrs. Doggett still looks after the kids and the organization Absolutely. very much. And it's a, we view it as an honor and a privilege to do this. Uh, I was born and raised in Montgomery County, still live here. And so uh, we feel it's, it's the right thing to do to make sure those families are taken care of if something happens. Yep, so as we've been talking here for a little bit, there's been some of the, the, the heroes information from the website. You go to the website, look up what Heroes information. Mm -hmm. One of the main events that you know relates to the public safety fund is the golf tournament. Yeah. Folks that go out there and like to uh, spend some time walking around, riding. Yeah. It's a great event, and most specifically, that is is an event to to honor those that have have supported Heroes and mm -hmm. do support Heroes, and and then give back to the community. And it's a great time as this is a great organization. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, and it's, uh, of course, now legendary, Chief. Uh, this will be the 51st annual golf tournament. It's the only public fundraiser that Heroes does. Uh, we never solicit officers or firefighters, and so this is an opportunity for us to raise funds to pay for the tuition of those kids that are right. in college. And we have 14 in college today and another 30 more that to we come. still need to educate beyond right. that. 
Right. So. Yeah. So great event. And again, Jack, I, I appreciate the opportunity to take a, a, a few moments and talk about heroes and get our folks to understand, you know, how you all play such an amazing uh, support network yep. in this community. Thank you very much. And oh, it's great to be here. Glad great to, to be here at 32. Glad to have you. Yeah. So uh, as you saw when we were talking about these videos, one of the great things we do is as a fire service organization is also work with our youngsters in the communities and, and getting people exposed to the fire service that they never would have thought about being in the fire service. Um, the rec department, Robin Riley, the director of recreations, reached out a little bit ago, and, and we engaged in a fire fit, fire smart program uh, a little while back. And, and this program, in partnership with the expanded food and nutrition uh, unit out of the University of Maryland, took a cadre of high school girls, high school ladies, and put them through a multiple weeks worth of interactions with our, our folks. That's great. Um, exercise, fire safety information. We hit them with a test on day one and, and a pre-test and, and used to work that towards, you know, some of the material that we were talking about. Yep. And that produced a fun, interactive environment where we threw them through some of the physical uh, uh, fitness components. We threw them through some of the fire safety components. We had the, the, the folks like Captain Meyer come out, talk about healthy cooking, healthy eating, as there was that tie with the University of Maryland and nutrition. We had some, some great folks through Captain Worth, Captain Baltrowski, uh, Master Firefighter Sujapan, you know, come out and talk about the different arenas within fire rescue and what they do as an EMS supervisor, as a master firefighter driving apparatus with the with hazmat experience, uh, a fire arson investigator who came from the, the science community. Mm -hmm. it, it clearly shows, and we were glad to be able to partner with REC in such a great opportunity that, you know, like with STEM, science, technology, or engineering, and math, that there's a lot of career choices inside of the fire service that people don't often think about or realize or they're there. So it was a great chance and a great opportunity. I also cannot, cannot miss to recognize the, the superstars of risk reduction and Beth Ann Nesset and, and Jim Resnick as they, you know, worked extensively with Robin. Um, Irv Smith and E. Light as they talked about the physical fitness components. Um, and then uh, Chief Bailey and Chief Sanford as, as they were the, the the, the backstops to helping make some of this occur. So great job done by the folks at uh, uh, REC and Fire Rescue with Fire Fit. Ms. Navarro had a proclamation um, just last week with our folks about uh, Fire Fit on how that um, was important as we kicked off Women's uh, uh, History Month. And, and Ms. Navarro, I really appreciate that time uh, and recognition of this program. So. Jack, again, thanks for coming out, being part of us today, this nice dreary day here. Honored, in honored to be here, Chief. Honored so, to be here. No worries. So um, spring is definitely here. It was 70 and 80 degrees almost the other day. Today it's 40. Tomorrow it's going to be 30. It is just spring in, in, in the D.C., Maryland area. But absolutely get out there with this better weather. Get out there and enjoy time outside doing training, doing your building familiarizations, walkthroughs, get your, your boots on the ground, as you, would, as you might say. Um, get ready for the, the heat and humidity that it will come. And, and until next time, take care. Stay safe. Thank you much.